Hello everyone and welcome to another update to Hair Strand Designer. This is version 1.265. Now when you download you actually see this file says version 1.2641 core, right? That's not relevant, right? Just as long as you've got the, the right folder and when you run this it basically comes up 1.265. So don't worry about that, right? That aside, I've added the blurring effect and it's a work in progress so you'll see here that I've freed up some space. Uh, there used to be um, the the root and tip uh, scale sliders here, and I've actually moved them to the relative color part. So root is now coverage for the root tone, and tip is coverage for the tip tone. That's what it always did, but it was just there, right? I'd had it as a slider out in the open, and it makes more sense to have it next to the colors because that's really what it's affecting at the end of the day so you can see um if i was to generate then i'll look at the mask you can see a lot of this is blue and more of it's green because they, these are quite high so i'll put them right up to the top you'll see that almost root and tip get through and very little of the variation uh, channels get through so that's that's now there for the rest of um the development of this Right, so back to this little message here. Post-process blur feature in progress. Press B to apply, add some blur to the active map. Right, active map doesn't mean the previewer. It means one of these maps, right? And it's got to have been generated first. So what it does is it looks at the generated map and it does a little uh, shader blur, Gaussian blur effect on it. So you press B and nothing looks like it's happening, but it's very subtle. Um, you have to press B quite a few times for it to take place. Now, if you want that to be quicker, I'm just going to turn off, actually, I'm going to turn off the randomization and regenerate. So that's kind of like the undo at this point in time. I've yet to sort of cache the, the, the texture before doing the blur thing. So you just do generate again and you'll get that back. Uh, I must have changed the colors. Did I change the colors? All right, I'm pretty sure that looked different a minute ago. Maybe I changed them back. There's something wrong here. Anyway, so you press B again a few times and you'll get eventually this kind of looking a bit tighter. Now it might be hard, it's hard to see this in the video. So if you use Z and X, you can actually, uh, Z will decrease the blurring uh, power. Uh, as you, you know, it's like a, an internal value, you can increase it and decrease it. So if you hold down X for a while and then start pressing B, it's going to do more blurring per press, right? So I'm going to hold down X for like a good three seconds and then I'm going to start pressing B. Now you can see it's blurring so much that it's fading into the background and, you know, you're getting these little kind of defects and things. So just be careful of that. Uh, so I'll just regenerate again. There you go, I've got it back now. So now when I press B, it's a lot quicker, right? So I've I've made it really low to start with because you might not want a lot of blurring and it's like it does the minimum amount. So I'll just do generate to get it back. So but once you're happy with it, you know, you can use Z to bring it back a bit. There's no there's no actual signal of how much blurring there is. I should have added it, but um this is just a work in progress and I thought I'd give you guys what I've done so far with it. So there we go, that's a decent amount. Um, if I want more, I'll just press Z a good bit and then just press B. So I'm holding down Z just to get rid of some and then I'm just doing little bits. You can see it kind of progressing. So this works for any map that you're currently selected. So I can do the AO map, right? Or generate the AO map and then have a good look at it and then press B a few times and you see it blurries that up a bit. And that's quite nice. Uh, the main request was the normal map uh, because the normal map looks a little jaggy. I'd still say bring a normal map into Photoshop and use the oil paint filter, at, you know, like settings of two, two and two uh, or three, 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 because that's that's better because it kind of follows the line a lot better. Whereas this is just a Gaussian blur, right? So it's just blurring it out and it's, the lines still look jaggy and terrible. So it's not the best blurring algorithm and I guess it could use some fine tuning. So let me just disable these and generate again, see if I can get it 
So I'll take it, I'll press Z until, you know, it's pretty much zero. Oh, oh I think it's going into the minus. That's what's happened there. All right. So I definitely need to sort of have more controls of this, but at least there's blurriness there, right? Managed to add it in and, you know, you tap away, then that's you, you'd export your maps. Each time you generate, it wipes it, you know, it's like back to normal. So that's what's new, the coverage is new, and uh, the blurring is work in progress. There's also this quick save and quick load. So each time you generate, each time you click generate, it's gonna in, it's gonna internally save all these values. So if I press F11 now, I got everything back to where I was when I last clicked generate. So even like if I'm on depth map, I enable this. Let's enable a few things. Uh, right, I'll move all these around. I'll change some numbers here. I can put some numbers in here, and I know change the colors. Just everything. It's it's actually a built-in thing that it takes a snapshot of the state of the game and I thought you know that'd be quite useful for uh, undo or or any sort of crashing so if I click uh, generate it would save all those settings right so you can see how everything looks it's even saving the random seed so and it's it saved the fact that this is switched off so now uh, if I was to like close this, so let's say I had a memory leak or something, I was like, oh, it's crashed. Uh, you know, after I press generate, it's maybe crashed or something. So I can then boot it back up. Let's see, I thought I had that open. But no, um, okay, and then press F11, and I've got everything back. So that's. It's a good little kind of quick save function, especially for like crashes and things at this point in time. And uh, saving the project won't be very much different uh, because, all right, saving the project, it will just save what it needs to save all these, these values and things, and it will save it as a text file. So you can get the text file and make changes, uh, come back in here and load it up that way. But, uh, and obviously if you've made different, you know, different setups, you don't want to just be pressing F11 and F12 each time. Uh, I also think when you when you press this uh, F12 for quick save or generate, I think it saves it. I'm just going to check. I think it saves it in your app data because Game Maker Studio is sandboxed and they say that well, you can find the files in local and then it would be here Strand Designer. So I think it looks like this one. And there, there you go, there's the save file. So, I mean, I could try open this. Don't know what will happen if I open it. Um, see if it shows me anything. Nah, it's just a lot of Unicode stuff. Uh, built in variables or whatever, so yeah. So Unicode. Yep, so, um, so I will make a kind of save file system that is, you know you can read it at least and you can save it where you want it to but if you're ever missing any maps like texture maps because you've maybe saved them into the same folder as the software which I kind of tell you not to do it will end up here somewhere so I've had one or two customers uh, ask that right so in case you can't find your maps that's where they'll be and that's pretty much what's new in version 1.265 I'm not going to change the price for a while uh, I'm going to keep it there, uh, maybe for another three weeks or month or so until I've got a few major features in. So get it, get it this month at least. Uh, you know I've got the right to change my mind at any point in time, and I'm often quite indecisive and fickle. So yeah, so that's it. Um, I hope you enjoy using the the new features and any requests. Let me know. I've got the flow map working by the way, so that's good and. Um, yeah, if there's a little kind of memory issue uh, where if you keep generating strands, if you keep the software open and generate strands all the time, it kind of chunks up in memory and it's like I can't find a way to flush it out for the life of me. I've tried so many things and uh, yeah, I kind of gave up on it. So the workaround is to just press F12 to save your settings, 
restart the app and press F11 and you've got them back. So sorry, that's the kind of the way it goes. Like I'm not a fully fledged like C++ programmer right? and I'm using just whatever's available, i.e. Game Maker Studio to make this solution. And it won't be like totally pristine, but it's, it's good, right? It's good. So any requests, let me know and I'll make sure I can get around to do it. But uh, to find the, find the app, let's see, just viewing websites. Cool. I'll save that. Um, so you'll see it here. It's uh, robertramseyartstation.com forward slash store and it'd be J7PY. I think that's all you really need. Uh, J7PY thing. Uh, I'll post this in the, the YouTube video description so you can see exactly where to go f to get it. And yeah, so thanks for watching again this you know another update i'll try and slow down with the updates because it's maybe getting a little bit annoying <laughs> right so catch you guys in the next video bye